Hey, what's poppin' Jin Bob here coming today with a video that uh I'm just reading some tweets today. And it's not because I'm out of video ideas for games or anything, even though this is a channel that's predominantly about gaming. So I asked you guys to tweet at me a couple of questions that you had over on Twitter. You guys don't know what my Twitter is, it's at Jin Bob Gaming. I'll put the link somewhere. The first one here is from Fangirl's Life who says how long have you been doing YouTube? So this channel, I started up back in December of 2013, which um, I had a channel before this one where I uploaded uh, vlogging content, but I ended up deleting that one just because I don't think I'll make a good vlogger because I ramble about stuff way too much. But then I sort of learned later on down the road that vlogging sort of is just rambling about a bunch of stuff, so... Yeah. But I like games and I want to shift the focus of anything that I did towards gaming, so I ended up making this gaming channel in late 2013 and then I started posting in I think mid 2014 so that all said and done it's now 2016 so it's been almost two years which I know that seems like a long time for some of you guys out there but truth be told I still have so much to learn about YouTube and about video making and about this industry as a whole that I wouldn't consider myself a veteran just yet but I'm not like a fresh off the boat beginner either I have a semblance of what I'm doing sort of so June something will be the two year anniversary for this channel, which yay. All right, this next one's from Cassandra Fox, who says, can you prank call someone random? Also, what's your favorite ice cream? I love you. Uh, my favorite ice cream is probably something with cookies in it and vanilla. All right, and let's go ahead and prank call, let's prank call my friend Kevin. For those of you who don't know who Kevin is, he's been one of my friends since freshman year of high school. So I'm gonna go ahead and just see how my good old friend is doing tonight. Oh. Hey, Kevin, is your refrigerator running? No. You better eat a dick! Well, now I can say that I harassed one of my friends for the purposes of a video. Thank you for that. All right, next one is Akansha. Akan Akansha. Ak fuck. All right, this is by Akanshka who says, Favorite Fire Emblem game. Well, I got some fates sitting behind me, but I think my favorite one in the franchise thus far is probably... Hmm. Oh man, that's a hard one. It's like picking your favorite child. I do feel like fates is the most complete Fire Emblem to date, but that's also because it's the most recent one. And it's not like it's without its problems either. I think all things considered, 7 is forever going to hold a special place in my heart simply because it is the first Fire Emblem game that I've ever played. And it's sort of the moment where I fell in love with tactical RPG games. Alright, next question is from Music is Amazing. Who asks, You'll probably hate me for this question, but which game do you like more? Fire Emblem Birthright or Fire Emblem Conquest? Well, I got both of them lined up here behind me. Um, I think I like Birthright a little bit more. Okay, next one's by Ryu Kishi, who says, If you could do a Let's Play of a Fire Emblem game, would you do it? Oh, would I? I've actually been thinking about doing a Fire Emblem Let's Play on my channel for a really long time. And I've always wanted to. I've tried to do a little bit of research on, you know, capturing uh, GBA footage or 3DS footage. The only issue, and it's quite of a large issue, is Nintendo doesn't allow monetized videos of anything unless it's through their creators program, which you have to sign up for. And I'm not opposed to signing up for it. It's just that even if you do sign up for it, you have to play one of the games from like a pre-selected list. You guys can actually go on the Nintendo website and find it. And uh, I looked through their entire list and there's not a single Fire Emblem game on there anywhere. So um, I cannot actually make any videos about Fire Emblem without Nintendo's permission. Ignore that stuff off. That doesn't exist. That's just decoration. But the answer is yes, I'd love to do one. I just can't. All right, next one's from Estefania Lopez who says, why are you so interested in Fire Emblem? Um, I don't really know. Fire Emblem is a game where you can like sort of slow down and experience the game at your own pace. There's not a sort of set, you gotta do this by this amount of time or you die and you gotta try again, game over sort of stuff. Uh, it's a game where it's sort of like chess. And yes, I realize how boring it fucking sounds to compare a video game to chess. Chess is, chess is like the one thing where you can consider it fun, but the moment you're a part of a club for it, you're like that lame guy that nobody invites to parties. It's cool, not like I wanted to go to those anyways. But I don't know, it's just the characters, the universe, everything about it just really sort of sucked me in and made me feel like I was a part of it. And I just had a lot of fun growing these characters that I got attached to. I don't know, that's what really sells Fire Emblem for me. I can't really describe my passion exactly in words 
on why I love it. I can just say that there are things about it that I love and as a whole, I just love it a lot. All right, next one's from Gamers Rule 101 who says, why'd you start doing YouTube, Jin? Uh, YouTube was just sort of a thing that popped up. It mostly popped up when I met Adam. You guys might know him better as Scott as Minecraft. But prior to doing YouTube itself, I've always wanted to entertain in some way, shape, or form. I took a lot of acting classes uh, throughout high school. Uh, I did some acting as well, well, even into college. Just because I like the idea of performance and I like the idea of entertainment. I think there's a really fascinating sort of art behind everything that you take in as a medium. And prior to actually starting up my YouTube channel, I think it was in 2012, auditioned for two Korean music companies because originally what I wanted to do was become a singer but unfortunately because I lack both the looks and the singing skills I was not accepted and I am not a singer so I pursued the next thing that I like the most and that was gaming and you know I never really found a way to put YouTube and gaming together until I met Adam because I didn't even know there was gaming YouTube until I started doing YouTube I've told this story a couple of times before and I'll tell it again just because it is relevant um I met Markiplier once at a Christmas party, I think around in 2013, around the time I started up my channel. But by then, I wasn't posting videos. I didn't post videos for another half year after. And the awkward thing is I didn't know who he was. I just sort of sat there and I talked with him and I was like, uh -huh, yeah, cool, dude, that's awesome, cool. But in reality, I didn't know anything about gaming YouTube back then. So this whole world just sort of opened up to me the moment I started uploading videos. like. I had no idea there was this side of YouTube. I mean, I'd heard of PewDiePie, but who hadn't at that point? But then, you know, I started seeing communities. I started, you know, seeing these panels. I started seeing these events. And that's when it all became a little bit more real for me. And I was like, all right, yeah, this is amazing. And this is something that I really want to be a part of. So, here I am. All right, next one is from Tiffany slash Karen, who says, what's it like to meet a fan in person? So, there's only been two situations where I've ever met fans in person the first one is obviously from uh, pax prime where i got to go around and meet a couple fans and um it was i'm not gonna lie it's kind of awkward mostly because my people skills aren't too great but also just because i don't really know how to interact with a fan just yet and i don't really know what to say other than thank you guys so much for everything that you've done for me when someone comes up to you like really idolizing you and you know, having a, so much respect for you just for doing what you do and being who you are. I, I haven't really figured out a plausible way to respond to that just yet besides saying thank you. And, you know, even then, that seems like it's not really enough. I think the most awkward moment, though, was um, I was going around with Ross, a.k.a. House Owner, on the uh, PAX, I think it was the show floor or something like that. And as we were walking around, uh, there were these two fans following us around and um every time we turn around and we saw them they're only like a couple feet behind us but they would do that thing where they saw us looking so they turn around to make it look like that they weren't looking at us but it was pretty obvious that they wanted our attention and they wanted to uh say hi and eventually they worked up the courage to say so we said hello we said thanks um, we took a couple pictures with them, which was really cool. I think the most awkward part of that whole thing was the whole build-up. You know, the sort of, oh my god, they're Jin and Ross, should we talk to them? I don't know, I don't want to bug them, but... Guys, I don't really care if I make YouTube videos or not, I'm still a human being. Feel free to approach me in public if you guys ever see me. Don't be, like, weirded out or ashamed to say hello, don't feel awkward about it. If you're willing to approach me as a person rather than a celebrity, um, that makes it less awkward for me as well. Which... Uh, I should probably take my own advice because during that same convention I also met Ross and Barry from the Game Grumps and I was so starstruck that I didn't know what to say to them So I just sort of stood there. I was like, oh, I like your videos. And then we stood there with our hands in our pockets. Oh That's an awkward memory. The other time I met a fan was at a Cheesecake Factory, which I was eating with Ross, Max, and Tim and a fan approached us and they're like, hey, I think I know you guys from YouTube. Can we get a picture? And that was a pretty cool moment, honestly. I don't know, meeting fans has always been really awesome. If not a little bit awkward, but I think getting to see the faces on the other side of this monitor, um, all of you guys, I think that's probably one of the highlights of my career thus far. All right, Snowy Black Call asks, uh, how often do you interact with your viewers? Not as much as I would like to. Um, unfortunately, I spend a lot of my day either doing other things or working on videos, mostly the latter. 
That's actually part of the reason why I did this video. I feel like I don't get to talk with my viewers enough. I don't get to actually bond with you people as a human being enough. I care about my fans and I care about what they think because I care about people, you know? I just, I'm a person myself. It's not like because I'm a YouTuber, I'm just a name or some abstract existence out on the internet. No, I got my own things that I think and do. I think at the end of the day, that's what I want to be known for more. Not the whole, hey, he shouts obscenities when he plays video games thing. Okay, yeah, that's fun too, but, but hey, that's why this video exists. If you guys at any point in this video enjoyed it, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. It mean a lot to me, and I'd love to see you guys again in future videos. But until then, you guys, thanks again so much for watching. Goodbye.